As spring crew, chairs are to be placed around the ring. This is the position in which you will take when you're a ring crew. You may certainly watch the dog the entire time. So like I said, these have the tendency to be the best seats in the house. Again, you're waiting for the gate to call. Uh, they will answer or they will call out next height is 16 inches. You will then proceed to get up, walk over to the jump, pick up the bar, look for the 16 inch, place the bar on top, and return back to your seat. If inadvertently a dog knocks a bar while they are running and it remains at the same height, you once again will go and pick up the bar, put it into the slot of 16 inches, and return back to your seat. And that's basically ring in a nutshell. One of the, a couple of the things that I like to do on, uh, on top of just being a ring crew is figuring out exactly which jumps I'm going to be responsible for. So because there's four other people, or rather three other people in the ring, you can all decide which jumps you would like to be able to position. That way you're not both running to the same jump. Um, so I like to pick three or four jumps that I'm going to be responsible for, whether they fall down or whether there's a ring crew chase. That makes it a lot easier so that each and every one of you have a responsibility for how many jumps you need to do um, and exactly which jumps you're going to be going for. Hi. As a ring crew, you're going to have to set bars. Um, sitting in a chair, being a bar setter, getting the best seat in the house is one of the benefits of being a ring crew. You have to change bars when there's, a, number one, a jump height change, or if while the dog is running, they accidentally are tip a bar not far down for the jumps. Um, again, it's important to know what the bar height is before you actually leave your chair to go and get the jumps uh, to change them, which is what the gate is going to tell you. So the gate will notify you when the bars are to be going up or when the bars are to be going down. This is a jump that I'm just going to demonstrate to you how we make the uh, changes in the jump heights. So along the sides, these are all numbered. They are numbered from a number four all the way to number 26. You, as a ring crew, pick up the bar, place it on one side, in this case 16 and 16, and now you have your jump height change. Then you head to another jump and do the same thing. It's important to do this expediently so that there's not a lot of hold up in the front. So as a ring crew, we want to make sure that the bars are going up quite quickly, you're back in your seat so that the dog is able to run. And that's what setting the single jump bars are like. And here you see the different jump heights. We have 26 all the way down to four inches. So again, bars fit nicely on top of the cups. They don't hold inside the cups, but just nice on top of the cups so it's easy for the dogs to displace. There is a properly set bar. And once again, here are your jump heights. The way it's configured is so that the dog, when approaching it, it looks very different than a regular jump because the bars underneath are crossed. So as a ring crew, setting this up, if the bars are now down on the ground and I want to set it up for a 20 inch jump height, the easiest way is to pick up your first bar, look for your 20 inches on either side, place the bar onto the 20 inches, bring the wing in if you need to, that would be a little bit helpful. Then your second 20 inches. I always set the two far bar or the top bars first because that will give you the distance. Then quite easily you can set the bottom bar. So I set it at 16 on one side and 16 on the other. Once again, they are parallel. So now you have a nice crossing pattern and it's the dog approaching you. So the jump looks like so as the dog approaches. So that is our double jump setup for ring group. Here we have the saloon style tire. As you can see, magnets 
hold it together on the bottom as well as on the top. And we press them together and the tire holds. What we want to do when we're changing heights on the tire is open it first. Remember, this makes it easier. Open your tire, take the pins, unhook them, and then you're going to see the numbers that correspond with the jump height. So in this case, I'm going to be setting the jump at 16 inches. I'm going to place the pin in on the 16 inch, close it, move over to the other side. Once again, keeping that tire open makes this a lot easier. Removing the pin, taking it up to that 16 inch jump height, closing the pin, and then we put the tire together. And that is how we end up making uh, uh, adjustments to the different heights. Once the um, tire is set, it will stay in that particular position because the magnets are going to be holding it. If a dog happens to hit it while you're uh, doing your ring through duties and it happens to open like so, it is our responsibility once again as ring crew to go over and just adjust the magnets so they are back in place and the jump height remains intact. So that is our tire jump. in our sign-up sheets or our volunteers for helping out inside the ring, we're going to do some leash running. So leash running is the dog commander will set their dog up at the first obstacle. So for example, this is obstacle number one. They drop their leash behind them. At no point should you interfere with the handler. Just wait until the dog and the handler have left. At that point, go ahead and grab the leash, walking back, and knowing exactly where the finish jump, or in this case, it's going to be this jump, I'm going to drop the leash near the exit so that the dog and handler may run to the leash and get the leash. Um, other possibilities are if there's a bucket, then often we can put the leash inside the bucket. But basically the leash runner picks the leash up from the start of the run to the end of the run and places it wherever it is designated to be placed. That is leash running. It does take a little bit of work. This is one that's good for fitness, um, and it does get to be a lot of walking back and forth. So it's one that people definitely want to do that feel like they are capable of being able to walk for, you know, an extended period of time. There you have leash running. 